Okay guys, nice to meet you. My name is Bogdan and today I want to cover topic and John Dewey. Uh, well, everyone knows that he's a very prominent American um, educator. He did a very big contribution to education and educational philosophy overall. And he gave basically a new direction to educational thought and processes. Uh, he's thought a lot about the interconnectedness between democracy and education and well it's very important he said uh, that the education will make democratic and in good democracies the education is very important i think it's obvious from one point of view but um, he draws a, on a lot of i mean uh, ideas there so we need to cover today some of them to make a summary basically of course, Dewey rejected authoritarian structures and subsequently the traditional teaching methods in school. Uh, he believed in progressive education and advocated for reforms pedagogical aspects of teaching and school curricula. And most importantly, Dewey believed that at the center of the whole academia was the child. So the Dewey's uh, educational philosophy and reforms were somehow, you know, uh, I mean, so they were somehow uh, concerned primarily with the child. And Dewey's philosophy of education, its relation to experience, the uh, democracy, humanism and pragmatism have largely affected the modern system of education all over the world. So um, there are different sections united by threads. First of all, let's talk a bit about Dewey's philosophy of education. Well, you know, Dewey's ideas um, somehow mirrored the, um, the effects of new industrialized, colonized society, fraught with the problems and aftermaths of two world wars. Uh, he was largely inspired by Marx's theory of social struggle and conflict between classes, because Marx's theory of conflict is that the society is stratified, layered, with different strata and there is a competition within these different classes. Marx stresses that social analysis should focus on class structure and relations. He had an inspiration from Habermas thoughts, which are in the tradition of Kant, and emphasized the role of education to transform the world into a more human, just and egalitarian society. His writings in democracy and education express his philosophy of education as a way of social reform. He saw education as a means of serving the democratic process through making corrections in the economic um, you know, means and by obtaining political ends that would lead to progression of the society. So hence education for Dewey is the culmination of his political ideas and the shaping of a society in which the common goods, among which are the knowledge and social intelligence, are distributed fairly among all who participate in that society. Establishing of, progressment, uh, of progressive schools in the 18th century was an effort to liberate traditional school system of education and mainly to facilitate the intellectual growth of a child. However, Dewey was critical about those progressive schools on the premise that freedom alone was no solution. Learning means a structure in order must be based on a clear theory of experience, not simply the whim of teachers or students. On the other hand, Rousseau and Lenti Pastelozzi, Frobel and other educational theorists believed that a child was like a seed and if they were left to nourish and nurture naturally, they would naturally bear flowers and fruits. In the book Christian Education, written in 1916, Dewey clearly states that the methodology of teaching leads to the purpose of teaching, as teaching and learning is pedagogical, therefore, the subject matter should be planned in an effective way. It clearly states that the subject matter of the learner is not identical with the formulated, the crystallized and systematized subject matter of the adult. The subject matter alone is not a guarantee of learning development. Uh, rather, the teacher should plan and connect the subject matter to the students, keeping in consideration the needs, desires, interests and cognitive development of the students as he shows in how we think. Well. Dewey's main concern was the disparity between the experiences of child and the kind of concepts imposed upon him. He believed that this gap curbs the child's natural experiences and abilities, forcing him to follow the dictates of a formal education. Dewey is equally critical of the progressive education which imposes concepts such as the rights to free expression or free activities, these tenets of education also impose ideas upon a child. 
Dewey was deeply inspired by the vision of a liberal free society and realized the pressing need of freedom and equality, emancipation from social burdens to liberate individual and society from the structures of power. Uh, Dewey's um, philosophy, uh, you know, in Dewey's philosophy of education, uh, we see a close link between a child's life and his experiences as a continuous process which he regards as the aim of education. So in this way, education has the scope of equipping a child with social competence. Unless this link is made, education is useless. Dewey sees a strong correlation between interaction and continu continuity of experiences. It is through interaction that a child brings in experiences from society, because of such continuous interactions, environments are created. These environments are the fields in which situations and conditions interact with personal needs and purposes and create lifelong experiences. Uh, therefore, there should be order and direction of a child's experiences, which will give him a composed and integrated personality. He gives example of the games children play in which they follow rules of the game, willingly to continue the game. Similarly, students are involved in class activities in groups and the movement forces to get the activity done. This learning process allows students the freedom of thought, judgment, and power to execute decisions. This learning experience should have a clear purpose and an understanding of the surrounding conditions. Uh, no less should that occurred before, so that it could allow reflection and analysis of issues and experiences. Such structured interactions turn an impulse into a plan of action. This brings forth to his philosophy of humanism. As a child discovers by doing, the child is explicitly realizes the main actor of the entire learning process. The child's role is no longer vulnerable or a subject of imposition. Rather, a child is a free individual with his aptitude and interests. As he is actively involved in the learning process, the child is an active social actor who participates in social experiences. And experiences for him involves a dual process of understanding and influencing the world around us, as well as being influenced and changed by that experience. Therefore, education should be concerned about the child's experiences in school and in natural environments outside the school. Particular experiences should be assessed to the degree that they contribute to the growth or to getting more experience. Growth in Dewey's context means that the individual is gaining the ability to understand the relationship and interconnections between various experiences between one learning experiences and another. According to Dewey, experience occurs continuously because the interaction of life, creature and, and environment conditions is involved in the very process of living. Uh, Dewey's method of teaching was based on his pragmatic philosophy, the pragmatism, and his, um, the option um, that direct experiences is the basis of all methods. Any relevant knowledge and information is in some sense experiential as it relates directly to the lived experience of the individuals concerned. For him, knowledge takes place in concrete and meaningful situations through spontaneous activities of children. Dewey's methods of teaching were based on the principles of learning by doing activities in connection with the life of a child. Such approaches to teaching and learning follow strategies like project-based or problem-based method of learning. Curriculum, Dewey demanded, was not imposed upon the students, rather it had the capacity to allow individual differences among the students and value their experiences. Dewey's curriculum theory is based on anthropological, psychological and social, um, philosophical or political perspectives that hold a child to be like an organism and this organism is searching for stimuli in order to grow. Dewey strongly supported experiential learning as it offers students a hands-on, collaborative learning experience which helps them to fully learn new skills and knowledge. Asserted that Dewey described service learning as experiential learning and that such learning has a continual spiral of events starting with direct experience followed by periods of reflections uh, where hypotheses are generated about immediate and future meaning. Uh, and then Tassi, through experience and actions, um, Tomin argues that Dewey, in his work, was able to dismantle the epistemological tradition that was able to display uh, farsightedness and originality, which was, uh, at the time, could not be recognized. Uh, to Dewey, development means transformation, that reconstruction or reorganization of experience, which adds to the meaning of experience and which increases ability to direct the curse of subsequent um, experience. So, uh, such experiences raise the child's curiosity and hope and gives him a purpose to carry out school activities. 
this participation and also his attitude about participation is collectivity. Is uh, basically due his philosophy of pragmatism is uh, his premise in education as a lived experience. A person experiences learning with others. Um, this approach of learning combines theory and experience into mutual accommodation and adaptation. Dewey used both philosophical and ph um, psychological perspectives to build his theory of education. He said that education's purpose is to make students' imagination strong, and he regarded it an important goal of education. The role of the teacher is to guide students, especially adolescents, on the verge of adulthood, um, to make you know, choices among desirable alternatives uh, is vitally important in the building of characters put by Kang. Um, of course, uh, you could say that in U.S. educational philos philosophy there appears to be a gap in the operational plan of learning through experiences. Uh, firstly, we don't find any objective Socrates based experiences. We do not get to know how to evaluate the experiences that help a child grow, so that in accordance the growth of child could be geared in measurable terms. Also, how do we know that the child is getting more knowledgeable, mature, intellectual through the experiences given by the school? What the learning objectives are and where the learners are expected to reach um, at the end of experiential learning. For this, the teachers would find themselves without direction. If the learning is heavily dependent on exercises, then how many experiences are to be planned in turn? How would teachers handle various responses, reactions, feedbacks on, simple, uh, on a similar experience? And uh, in, my, in our opinion, and uh, you know, the, thought, uh, the um, author of this article. Uh, it can soon lead to the teacher burnout, uh, and we do not find really any plot study, pilot study of experiential learning. Um, so that that can be you no know, tricky. But by the way, thank you very much. Uh, today uh, I spoke about John Dewey. I hope you did like the video. So uh, subscribe if needed.